Hey, this is Carly at Spectre 3D Technologies. Thank you for checking out this ornament tutorial that we created to help you get inspired to submit your design for the Habitat for the Holidays 3D Printed Ornament Contest. To find more information about the contest and to submit your ornament, visit the website at www.habitatornamentcontest.com. Okay, so in today's tutorial, we are going to learn how to model a basic holiday tree, and we're going to use Autodesk Fusion 360. For this ornament, we're going to start with a basic sketch, and then we're going to extrude it out into the third dimension. We will also add some 3D shapes, and we're going to use primitive tools for these. If you haven't already downloaded Fusion, you can find it at fusion360.autodesk.com. Um, once you're at the website, you will have the option to download a free 30-day trial, and the program is also free for students, enthusiasts, hobbyists, and startups. Okay, let's get started making our tree. As you can see, this is the Fusion interface and it's pretty simple. All of the tools that we'll be using this time are on this model ribbon that is found here and it's open by default. So start by selecting the line tool. By default, you can find this tool on the top of the sketch panel. You just click here and the tool will become active. Uh, when starting any design in Fusion, the first thing that you have to do is choose the plane that you want to draw on. The planes are indicated here by these three tan colored boxes. As soon as you select one, the graph will align to your chosen plane. You'll see that here. For this design, we're going to go ahead and just choose either of these vertical planes. Okay. If you aren't looking directly on the drawing window, you can always rotate the model around in your view by holding down the control key on your keyboard and the scroll wheel on your mouse. Okay, so now we'll get started with the outline of our tree. I'm going to start in the center of the grid at about the 100 millimeter mark. Um, to begin sketching, you just left click with your mouse and drag it out in your desired direction. For our first tree branch, we're going to be sketching a short diagonal line to get it started. And then once your line is about 15 millimeters long, you click to accept it, and you'll see that a line automatically appears between these two points. And you'll also notice that the line command is still active. This means that if we continue to sketch out our design, we won't have to restart the command. We can just keep going. So another nice feature about the line command is that you can switch into the arc command simply by clicking with your left mouse and dragging while you hold down your left mouse key. So we're going to do that now to give it just a little bit of a gentle arc line. So hold down your left mouse button and hover over the end of your line a little bit and then drag your mouse in the direction that you want to create your arc. Uh, this might take a little bit to get the hang of. It is easy to do once you Get it, I would recommend just practicing a little bit switching from line to arc until you get comfortable. Okay, uh, now continue this gentle arc until you are happy with the size of the first branch, and then you just click to accept the shape. All right, now we're going to hold down the left mouse button again, and then we're going to drag slightly upward to create the bottom of the branch. And we're going to repeat this process three more times. Each time the branch is going to get a little bit larger. Notice on these bottom two, I'm doing, I'm creating a straight line first and then adding the arc, kind of like I did at the top of the first one. All right, so now that you have your three branches, we're going to draw a vertical line to create your trunk. And if you'd like, you can add a little bit of a taper at the bottom of your tree, but just keep in mind that we're going to duplicate the tree on the other side with a mirror command. So you don't want to make your trunk too fat or too thin. This is just going to be half of your trunk. Okay, once you have that complete, just go ahead and draw a horizontal line from the bottom of your tree trunk to the green center line of the graph. Okay. Finally, we're going to complete this shape by drawing a vertical line along the green center line of the graph all the way from the bottom of the tree here to the very top of the tree. Okay, so once you click to finish the half of the tree, because you have closed the shape, the tree will turn a sort of tan color. And this always in Fusion indicates that the shape is completely closed. You'll also notice that once the shape is closed, 
the line command uh, is no longer active. You could still draw in another space, but um, it's not going to automatically continue the shape if you click right now. Okay. If you wanted to right now, you could just sketch the other half of the tree, but that would take a lot of time, and since we want it pretty symmetrical, it makes a lot of sense to just use the mirror command here. And that's going to just duplicate the sketch on the other half. So under sketch, go ahead and activate the mirror command. And you'll see that you're prompted to choose the objects that you want to mirror. Uh, since we need this entire tree sketch, the easiest way to do this is to use a crossing window. So start by hovering your cursor above the tree sketch on the right hand side. And then while you hold down your left mouse button, drag your cursor down into the left. You'll notice that there's a window that appears around your sketch. You want to make sure that the entire sketch is in this box, and then go ahead and release your mouse button. Okay, so now your tree is highlighted, and you'll see here that we have 39 objects that have been selected. So are all the little points of your sketch. Um, if you do choose an item that you don't want to select, you can deselect it just by clicking it again. And in our case, we're going to do this because we didn't want to select the center vertical line. Uh, that's going to be our mirror line. It's easier to just select it in the first place in the crossing window and then deselect that specific line. So just click on that again and you'll see that the number of objects selected has been reduced by one. Okay, so now click on the box that says no selection in your dialog box next to the mirror line. And for your mirror line, we're just going to choose that vertical line that we just deselected. Now notice that as soon as you choose the mirror line, the sketch will preview on the other side. And once you click OK, it creates the tree sketch for you. All right, so now we have a 2D sketch of our tree and we need to bring it into the third dimension. The easiest way to do this is to use the extrude command. So on the create dropdown, open extrude, and the first thing you want to do is select your profile. In this case, you will choose both halves of your tree. You can either do this by clicking on both halves or by using a selection window. Both of the halves should highlight blue, and this indicates that they're selected. So now you want to determine how much thickness you want to add to your shape. You can do this in two ways, either by dragging the arrow that appears next to the tree down here, or by inputting a specific dimension in the dialog box here, or in the input box next to the arrow. I'm just going to drag the tree out by 10 millimeters and then click OK to create the tree. Okay, so now we can give the tree some decorations. One of the easiest ways to do this is with the primitive tools, which you'll find under the Create dropdown. Unlike the 2D sketch tools, these will automatically be created in the third dimension. So go ahead and expand the Create dropdown and choose Cylinder. This time when you're prompted to choose the plane, we're going to click on top of our tree sketch and the graph will adjust so that it's on top of that face. So now click anywhere on the sketch that you would like, and once you drag your mouse out, the circle will automatically appear. Note that the point that you choose is going to act as the center point of your circle. You can either drag the circle to your desired distance, or you can enter a specific distance in the text input box. For this ornament, I'm just going to enter 5 millimeters. So if you rotate the ornament around a little bit. Remember you can do that by holding down control on your keyboard and the scroll wheel on your mouse. You will see that there is no need to use the extrude tool, that this tool automatically creates a third dimension like we were talking about before. Uh, there are also two arrows next to the cylinder. The or arrow that is pointing outward will make your ornament longer or shorter and the arrow that is sort of pointing to the right here will make the diameter of the circle larger or smaller. If you do push the outward arrow backwards, such as I'm doing here, it will actually act as a cut tool and will remove geometry, which will actually just create a hole, or you can create half of a hole, just like an indentation, however you want. Uh, this is a simple way to really add some variety to your decoration. Another way to create an ornament is to use the sphere command. So again, on the Create dropdown, we're going to choose Sphere. Again, select the face of the tree as your plane, 
And with this tool, you're going to create a 3D globe shape. So don't worry if the shape initially appears very large. You can easily adjust this with the arrow or the input box. All right, in this case, I'm going to use the dialog box to reduce the diameter to 4. And this time, we're going to want to set the operation to either join, which will add geometry and combine it with the existing geometry, or new body, which will keep the tree and ornament separate. This lets you relocate the ornament later if you want. Um, I'm going to select join, but you can choose whichever you prefer. And there's a little ornament. Now, using these two tools, I'm going to just spend a little time decorating my tree. In order to keep it more interesting, I'm going to vary the size of the ornaments a little bit. And you will see that we're getting some cool little decorations. All right, I think I have enough decorations now. And our tree is finished. So thanks so much for watching. I hope this inspires you to start working on your own ornament. We will be printing a copy of the winning ornament for free, but if you would like to have your ornament printed, and they do make a great gift for friends and family, we can certainly help you out. There is another great video tutorial on our website about how you can turn your Fusion file into an STL file and submit it to us, to, and we will print it for you. Uh, you can find that tutorial at www.spectro3d.com slash videos and you can upload your ornament on the Contact Us page. For those of you who would like to learn more about designing Infusion, you can check out the online courses available from CAD Learning, and we also have more information about them on our website. Finally, if you would like to get a PDF version of these instructions for free, you can sign up for our newsletter at spectra3d.com newsletter, and just be sure to tell us that you would like the tree PDF in the notes. All right, thanks so much, and we can't wait to see all your submissions.